event release radar. Uh, unfortunately, our dear friend Chase is traveling. Uh, he's a jet setter, so he's on the road at conferences doing uh, a lot of work. So I'm going to be here with you for the remainder of this week and indeed the release radar. We will go ahead and jump in, but as always, if you are joining us live, go ahead and drop a comment live and let us know where you're joining in from. Uh, had the pleasure of meeting several of you at the Level Up uh, Summit in Dallas just last week. It feels like it was uh, like yesterday. Uh, we're still kind of recovering, but um, no sickness at the staff level, so hopefully we're in the clear there. Hope everybody got home nice and safe. And with that, we will uh, launch into the releases that we had this week. Also highlight a couple of things that, that got dropped on Level Up Day as well. And we'll continue to kind of go through those. There's a lot to digest and a lot of really cool things just around the corner uh, that just needed a little bit of fine tuning um, and they'll be released here very soon. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's see if I can figure out my screens here. I don't have a production manager. Here we go. Um, First release of the week was Agent Studio now has multi-agent, or it supports multi-agents uh, in the system builder. So this is a, a fairly advanced feature within high level, uh, wherein you can build an entire agent and in interaction, both with uh, external MCPs. You can fire up different agents now, multiple agents within one flow. Um, and you're seeing here sort of in the middle part, um, this is like the the chat version. So you set up this the um, your flow within the agent studio, and then you can go and chat with it, and it will interact with these different agents. So in here, you're seeing an example where it's like, hey, I want to create uh, some content, and it's like, what do you want to create? And so based on what you're creating, whether it's a blog post, social uh, social post, or ad copy in this instance, um, it's going to uh, select that specific agent that's trained to do just that thing. Uh, and so you can kind of go through the motions here. It can also go ahead and publish things, tee them up and take a lot of actions on your behalf. Again, it's a, a slightly more advanced uh, feature. So if you're just kind of dabbling in AI, it's probably going to be a little bit overwhelming, but we're going to make it as uh, simple as possible for you to spin up stuff as well as support all the very advanced builders that are integrating third parties and databases and so forth. Um, and so that is what that feature is all about. Moving on, uh, we had another really nice update to funnels and websites. We have updated default styling for elements in the page builder. And what this really means is that things just by default look a little bit more modern. Um, we consulted with, of course, all the best designers in the world, and um, they helped us pick some better fonts. Um, ignore the stretched images here. We actually resolved that. Um, and for those of you that are using the new Funnel AI page builder, um, this is just a couple of days away from coming to use. If you're not seeing this, it's probably because you have um, the AI uh, Funnel AI build enabled, which I did. Uh, therefore, this is not my screenshot, but I think it's the picture. Moving on, uh, we've got snapshot support for the Agent Studio. So kind of hearkening back to what I was talking about to begin with. So if you build... Um, and if you build a flow within the agent studio, have it do all kinds of cool stuff, you can now include that with snapshots and provide it to your sub account or of course, sync or, or push uh, an update therein. Uh, next up, we have public API support for the agent studio as well. You can see lots and lots of work getting done on the agent studio. And so the developers that are building uh, connections via the public APIs, now have a lot more control there. Go ahead uh, and check out the documentation uh, for all that. If you are a developer, if you're not, uh, wait for them to build something awesome. Don't worry about it. Moving on, we've got the High Level University ha has recently launched a uh, Barber playbook. So if you didn't know, I put this in here. I actually created this URL redirect. So it launches you right into our community that our friend Haplin manages and has set all this up for us. Um, Haplin's created, in addition to a number of other content creators, a number of courses that are playbooks for specific types of businesses, for specific features within High Level. So highly recommend you jump in there. That's where everything's happening. There's a community that's associated with it as well. So there can be some discussion. We post town hall recordings and so forth. 
Um, so it's a way to make sure that you guys get access to some amazing content um, for these industry specific niches um, and courses, I should say, as well as specific features like how to enable and manage WhatsApp within high level. Um, there's a lot to that. So sometimes a playbook is the best way to do it. Instead of reading all the help documentation, we'll just lead you through it. So go highlevel.com slash playbooks. It will redirect you to that uh, learning tab within the community and you'll get access to that right away. Moving on, we have got um, a couple of highlights. Like I said, I picked out a few of these. These are no specific order, but they're things that jumped out to me. I had conversations with some folks at Level Up and they were super stoked on all this stuff. So I wanted to make sure that I highlighted it. Um, first up is workflows. You can refine and edit specific actions within uh, workflows. So you're gonna see this type of format for interacting with AI a lot throughout the entire platform. This is a great iteration. And the idea here is that you give context to the AI while you're chatting with it. So you don't just have to like spell out everything exactly. You can just point and click on the thing and you're like, okay, this is the thing I want you to mess with. And then you can have a conversation there, tell the AI what to do and it will do it for you. So you don't even know, you don't even need to know how to configure different things. Uh, you can just have a conversation there and it will take actions for you. Funnels and websites also got a very similar type of feature. Now, I think this is really cool and unique. Not only is it building much better websites, or I should say pages, um, this is a page specific builder right now. It will expand to multiple pages and so forth. Um, but right now, this is for building a single page. It goes through the specific industry that you're in, the objective, the style, the tone, all those types of things. And it it generates a pretty good looking page. Now, is it perfect? No, but you can go through and manually edit at the same time. And I think this is a big unlock for a lot of folks because they're like, okay, I'm used to just you know, giving it a prompt and like it's not quite what I want, so I have to redo the prompt and you're kind of fighting this like long conversation. The AI loses context uh, depending on how far you get into the, into the conversation. This solves that problem by generating the page, yes, then you can switch over to the right hand side of the screen. You don't have to press any buttons and you can manually edit things. So you can say, oh, this copy isn't quite right. Click the button, drag the text, rewrite it however you want. Or the other cool thing is just like in uh, Workflow AI, you can select a section, a row, an element and give the AI context for what you wanna change. So you can click on the button and say, I want this to be blue. And it knows, oh, I need to change the button to blue. Um, and I think that's insanely powerful because it's giving you a lot more control, but also optionality to just do things quickly yourself if you want to as well. Next up, we have the mobile version 4.0. Uh, this is really cool. We had a town hall on it today where we've received a lot of good feedback. Um, a lot of feedback that the team's going to take back and uh, obviously iterate on and continue to make better. Important note, a lot of these features, including this one, are enabled at the agency labs level. So you'd go to your agency level, go to settings, go to labs. And then within that, you have an agency and sub account um, labs release tab. And you would switch between those two. And then you can select which sub accounts you want to enable this for. So you don't have to go a wide release to everybody. If you don't want to, you can test it, see how it's working for you, provide feedback to the team right in that screen. Um, but the big highlights here, there's, there's really three. I know there's three because we talked about it so many times, but I'm going to try to remember what they are. First thing is the home screen. Um, home screen is brand new. As you can see, there's a sort of like pinned app section here and you can edit that. So if there are certain apps that you use and apps would be things like the dialer, like the task manager, like contacts. If there are certain ones that you use all the time that you just want shortcuts to right there, you can modify that and that's on a per user basis. So when you're logged in, yours changes, nobody else's does. That's super cool, love to see that as well as the updated uh, sort of UI and uh, you know, design of it looks incredibly good. So the second thing is search. So you're gonna see that here in the center here and uh, wiggle my mouse, so you can see it. Um, the, the search is really neat because it kind of works like Spotlight. If you're, if you're a Mac power user like I am, I use Spotlight for everything. Um, if you didn't know about that, uh, you can hit command spacebar and pop up like this universal search that you can do like anything with like open apps and make calculations and um, 
you know, search for specific types of files and, and so forth. Uh, we're going to get there with this, but the first thing that it's going to search through um, is going to be apps themselves. So like, let's say you want to open up tasks. You can just go to the search, type in tasks, and, and the, res the first result that's going to be there is tasks, and you can click and open that. It will also search through your contacts and opportunities, and we're expanding all the other things that it's going to search as well. So just like in Spotlight, when you search for a specific uh, term, you might get some photos, they'll be organized in a certain way, you might get some context and then documents and so forth. We're gonna do a very similar uh, thing when it comes to organi organizing um, all of those search results. So props to the, to the mobile app team for all the hard work on this and making it sort of backwards compatible so you don't have to flip over right away. Um, I, I love to see all that happen with feature flags, essentially. Uh, and then we had this other really cool, so this is coming soon, full disclosure, uh, this is not out yet, but one of the most important things, and, and we talk about this a lot, right? We write blog posts on it all the time. Actually, we do a monthly recap, if you haven't seen it, of our delivery rates, um, the email performance of the system as a whole. Uh, it's really good. We're, we're highly competitive compared to the industry, and we've got the data to prove it. But there are certain things like blocking and tackling that, that a lot of new users just don't even know how to do. And this is one of those tools that's gonna help you do this. So the domain warmup tool, basically you got a fresh new domain, you just, you're just you raring to go, you wanna send email, but wait a minute, you have to build up a reputation because email is not just like set it and forget it. Um, you've gotta build a good reputation so that um, email providers like Gmail, which controls like 80% of the market, and Yahoo and others that they see you as a non-spammer, as a non-scammer. Uh, and so in order to, to kind of warm this up, we have a programmatic approach. It's pretty sophisticated how they're doing this, but they're sending real emails. And this helps to warm up the domain so that you appear, and of course you are, and you maintain that reputation of being a good valid sender, a real business that's just trying to get uh, reach out to their customers. And we'll have a number of different things that will help you along that uh, path so that you don't treat yourself in the foot and have a problem with getting a bad reputation, which is can be challenging to recover from. So not only are we providing amazing infrastructure on the back end that's doing all kinds of all kinds of really cool things technically, we're also helping you to get that reputation up and running as fast as possible. And the warm-up tool will help you do that. Then we have, uh, this one's near and dear to my heart because we've got a couple of agencies that we run for um, for demo purposes, right? But you're gonna be able to have two, two brands under one agency. So that means that you could sell uh, under one, one brand uh, for a certain number of sub accounts, and then maybe another set of sub accounts uh, operate under a different brand. So this is a bit of a compromise because opening up to unlimited creates some other problems, but this has actually been in the works for years now and excited to see this come out very soon. Uh, I'm, I'm very certain that this is Q4 by the end of the year. All right. And that brings us to a couple of other enhancements. These are some backend things, but definitely some great fixes on the SEO front. So if you're using our SEO tool integrated with search Atlas, uh, we are now, we fix a number of issues there on the back end. They said don't announce it, but I think it's important to note that there is a lot of work happening behind the scenes that may not be as visual in nature, but they are certainly great to see the, the momentum there and motion as we call it. Um, we also did some optimization with the media files um, for funnels. So this has to do with, I actually read through this one in more detail, but this has to do with when you go to clone uh, a funnel there is a lot of different API calls and workers getting spun up and large Google Cloud bills in, that we're incurring. Uh, so we kind of killed two birds with one stone. One, we're making it way faster for you, which is the most important part. Plus we save on costs, which indirectly helps you too. Um, so now when you clone funnels, uh, all the media files that have to move around and do things uh, happens much more quickly. Then we've got chat. Uh, with AI support. So that's now live on the launch pad. Um, if you didn't know, we have a new version two launch pad that helps with the, the whole onboarding process for customers. Um, and so for the $97 plans, those that has been live for a while and we're continuing to improve that as well. 
All right, so on to some fancy upcoming releases. Uh, I don't know, this This is in Chase's honor since he's not here. I was going to put a picture of him working on the slide deck from Level Up, but uh, the image format wasn't supported, so thank you, Google, for that. But here's Chase. Uh, here's to you and your affinity to the word fancy. Uh, coming soon, we have custom fields redesign and new field types. Uh, I love seeing this. So... I don't know if I've got the presenter notes here. See if I can find them. Oh, here they are. Okay, so we're going to have date and time, URL, um, user fields, calculation fields, and synced fields. So lots of really cool stuff that, that's going to be coming to custom fields. And, of course, this UI, I broke it up. It's actually like one long one, um, but I wanted you to see some of the detail there. So I just cut it in half and showed you it bigger. Um, so anyway, this should be coming out fairly soon. Again, this seems like uh, it's going to be by the end of the year kind of thing, um, but can't wait to see all this awesome stuff come to custom fields and uh, the platform as a whole just feeling a lot more cohesive, a lot more customizable, especially for the advanced builders out there. Uh, next up we have got, let's see. Oh yeah, rental calendar. So rentals is technically in a private beta right now. Of course, we get access to all this because we get all the fun stuff. Um, but I just wanted to show off kind of what that the booking page looks like and the back end a little bit. Um, so that's coming along really well. Um, there's a couple little things that we got some feedback on that they're going to be improving over the next month or so. And we're hoping for a wide release um, as soon as possible. But we definitely have some some big players uh, in in the uh, rentals game that want to have uh, you know native hosting of multi-day rentals for for let's say airbnb type um, houses or i don't know maybe around here they rent out bikes at the beach uh so you want to do it like on an hourly basis and and have multiple um different bikes with inventory tracking and the whole bit so lots of effort that's been going to this for the past 10 12 months probably more and i uh, love to see this coming to fruition so with that i believe we are we are done. Let's see. Yep. We are. Cool. We made it. Um, sorry if I didn't get to any chats here, but let's see if we've got uh, anybody that we need to shout out. Oh, yeah. We've got lots of people here. Let's see what's going on here. Um, I believe. Here we go. We'll put up a couple of these chats here. Good afternoon to you, sir. Mr. Madongo. Uh, who else we got? Howdy from Jacksonville. David is uh, reliable, as Chase says, reliable as gravity. I don't know if you're the first one. It looks like you're the third, but maybe on YouTube you were the first. Uh, we'll see. What's up, everybody? Nice to see you. Oh, we got people checking in from uh, Georgia. I think we have an event going on there right now. I don't know. We're, we're hitting like 80 events, 80 to 100 events a year, so we might be there. Uh, and Brazil. I don't think we're in Brazil yet, but we should be there soon. Kia Ora, as always, watching in from Idaho. We've got Valencia, of course. Nice to see you, Julio. Uh, and all kinds of other people coming in from India, Calcutta, amazing. Chicago's here. So great to see all your shining faces. And uh, I'm sorry I can't get to all of these, but I'll be here forever. Um, thanks so much for joining us, uh, joining me. Tell Chase that I did a good job. Um, he is working hard. Don't you worry. And we will see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.